Hans Versberg, the CEO of Ericsson. Hans, last time we met last year, you laid out your vision of network society. Are we there yet? Have we arrived? Definitely, we're entering into the second phase of this uh, technology revolution that we call the network society. We looked in the future what will happen. It means that anything that benefits from being connected will be connected, and we see a huge impact on people, business, and society already now. So what is the, to remain relevant hands in the future in a network society, what is your strategy? I think that we, we have put, if I may draw, I mean, we have a strategic direction that you have mobile infrastructure here, uh, mobile broadband, and you have services. This is the core assets of Ericsson today. This is the base for us. That's the history of your business. Absolutely. It still will be there. Then we you are sure? They will be, networks will be there and services. Always? For a long time. 20, long time being what, 2020, Absolutely. 2030? 20, 30 years. Okay. We think the second... Well, I'll, I'll come back and tell you if you were wrong. <laughs> right, 2030. Then you see the new areas we're investing in, OSS, PSS. And T what does that sound? That's a billing system and operating system for the operators that want to transform to a data world. Yeah. Be able to charge for it, to follow it, uh, and to provision it. TV and media is the other, where everything's go TV and media. I mean, a lot of the content in networks. Cloud is everywhere, though. I mean, yeah. we don't even need that word anymore. All these businesses are yeah. on the cloud, so aren't they? IP is one, and then we have cloud, uh, which, of course, is, is two areas we're also investing in. And then, finally, we have industry verticals. We call it industry and society in Ericsson. Uh, so these are the five areas that we're investing in, and they have been selecting for very, very important reason. They're adjacent to our business. They're in the evolution of our customers, high degree of software, high degree of services is needed for them. And finally, they have a higher growth rate because in the market compared to my traditional and areas. Are you investing in these areas right now? You're absolutely confident that this is the future, these five areas? Yeah, so my work today is usually how, is how I do the resource, capital and resource allocation between these areas. Seeing that how these, do you do that? I, I see that, first of all, these areas perform well because these are my fundamentals. But then I move both money, resources, people, incentives to the new areas to succeed in order to be relevant in the future. If you then take my last uh, horizon here where I have uh, uh, mobile money, uh, you can have machine to machine, uh, you have mobile enterprise. Here we have innovation, a lot of innovation. It could be co-investments, it could be partnerships. Some of them will succeed, some will not succeed. So this is a long-term bet. Yes. So this is how we work with the model, the strategic direction, how are we in the network society, how are we relevant for the, for the customers that's going to be in the network society. Strong areas, then we have the target areas, and then they have the new areas out here. And then we try to move them downwards. Not all of them will succeed. Definitely up here you will have some coming in and out. I mean, for example, modems, we decided that we will discontinue that. Uh, so we will take those choices. But in the core areas and target areas, here we really need to succeed in order to be relevant and make the continuation of the transformation that Ericsson has done for 138 years. Andy Grove of Intel famously said, uh, only the paranoid survive. Are you paranoid at Ericsson about the future? Yes, we are. You are? Yeah, paranoid in, in, the, in the good sense, meaning that we always challenge what is happening and we know that we need to transform to be relevant. If that's paranoid or not, I don't know. But for us, we don't take status quo as, as this is going to take us to the future. We constantly need to transform. And that's why we also have worked a lot with how we're going to be relevant in the next generation on the network side. Hans, you're making major investments, major bets on, on new technologies. What kind of company do you want in 2020 or 2025? When people think Ericsson, what do you want people to think? A couple of things are very important. I think that the whole notion of that mobility and uh, our ability to transform businesses is, is fundamental for us. But secondly, I think that uh, we will be the leader of getting the different industries together, the telecoms, the IT, and the media, because they will come together. Well, Hans, in 20 years, you're going to come back, and I'm going to hold you to account. <laughs> Real pleasure and an honor. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.